Okay, in uh, section 2.7 there are several topics. The only topic I'm going to talk about in this video is the composition of functions. So I'm not going to talk about this, this, this topic right here, this topic of how you can form the sum, difference, product, and quotient of two functions. You can do that in class. I want to talk about the composition of two functions. Here we go. Start off like this. Suppose you wanted to, here are your two functions. f of x is 3 minus 2x squared, g of x is 1 over x minus 1. What is f of 2m? f of 2m becomes uh, 3 minus 2 times the quantity 2m squared, right? Which simplifies to 3 minus 8m squared. You could find f of anything, right? f of anything is 3 minus 2 times the anything squared. You could even find f of g of x. Now what does that mean? That means you're plugging in g of x in for x. You're not multiplying these two functions together. You're, you're literally plugging in this expression in for x into f of x. So f of g of x is f of 1 over x minus 1. That's how we define it. So what is that? Well, it's 3 minus 2 times the quantity 1 over x minus 1 squared. So you get, when you square this, you square the top and bottom and multiply by 2, you get this. Then you get the common denominator. So you get this. When you multiply the numerator out carefully and combine like terms, you get this. I'm going really quickly here. You may have to hit the pause button. Anyway, what I just gave you is, is an example of what's called the composition of two functions. There's, if, if you write this notation, f circle g of x, that means f of g of x. The order is really important. When you have f of g of x, you're first computing g of x, and then you're plugging g of x into f. That's what we just did. We, we first computed g of x, which was 1 over x minus 1. Then we plugged that whole expression uh, into, into the expression for f of x in for x. All right. Don't get that confused with g of g circle f of x. That would be g of f of x. Here you're first computing f of x and then plugging this whole expression f of x into the formula for, into x in g of x. Anyway, so let's look at some examples. Let's go back to those same two functions. What would g circle f of x be? That means g of f of x. So remember, you first compute f of x. The inside function is f of x. Now you're plugging f of x into g of x. So wherever there's an x in g of x, you're replacing it with 3 minus 2x squared. So it becomes this. Simplifies down to 1 over 2 minus 2x squared. You could even compute f circle f of x. That would be defined to be um, that would be defined to be f of f of x. And you first compute f of x, which is 3 minus 2x squared. Now you go back to the formula for f of x, and wherever there's an x, you're going to replace x with 3 minus 2x squared. So you get this. When you simplify that carefully, you would multiply this out and distribute the negative 2. Combine like terms, you get negative 8x to the fourth plus, plus 24x squared minus 15. Okay, see if you can compute g circle g of x. Where g of x, of course, is this function right here. This is g of x. So see if you can compute g circle g of x. Okay, well, it's kind of messy, but g circle g of x is g of g of x. So you first compute g of x, which is 1 over x minus 1. Now, wherever there's an x, wherever there's an x in g of x, you're going to replace it with 1 over x minus 1. So it's kind of messy. So g of x will be 1 over, g of 1 over x minus 1 becomes this, 1 over 1 over x minus 1 minus 1. Then when you simplify it, you get the common denominator, which is x minus 1. This is kind of subtle. You see that minus sign right there? That distributes across the whole numerator here, so this becomes a plus right there. That's kind of tricky. So on the denominator you get 2 minus x over x minus 1, and when you flip the denominator over and multiply, the final answer is x minus 1 over 2 minus x. Let's first compute the composition of these two functions. Let's compute f of g of x, which means we first compute g of x and then plug g of x into f. And let's also determine the domain. Okay, well f of g of x is going to be f of 2 over x. What does f do? f takes 5 over whatever you give it minus 2. So this is, this is f of g of x. Simplify by finding the common denominator on the denominator. So the denominator becomes 2 minus 2x over x. When you flip this over and multiply out, you get 5x over 2 minus 2x. Now look at this carefully. The domain of the composition, there's two stages. Doesn't x have to be in the domain of the inside function? If the inside function can't work on x, then you can't even start the process. So x must be in the domain of the inside function. x must be in the domain of g in this case. 
But it's worse than that. Suppose you can compute g of x, but when you go to plug g of x into f of x, maybe g of x might not be in the domain of the outside function. Notice, I'm not saying x has to be in the domain of the outside function. I'm saying g of x has to be in the domain of the outside function. So in this particular example, x must be in the domain of the inside function. So x must be in the domain of g of x. So x cannot equal 0, right? Now watch this. g of x must be in the domain of the outside function. Well, the denominator of the outside function cannot equal 0. So what you plug in for x can't equal 2. So g of x can't equal 2. What does that mean? Well, g of x is 2 over x, which cannot equal 2. When you cross multiply and solve for x, that means x cannot equal 1. So you actually were able to rule out two different values of x. You ruled out 0 because it wasn't in the domain of the inside function, but you ruled out 1 because if x equals 1, it made g of x 2, and that ruled out the domain of the outside function. It wouldn't be in the domain of the outside function. Kind of tricky, huh? Let's do another one. Well, actually, why don't you do this one? See if you can compute, see if you can compute g of f of x and state the domain. Okay, now here, g of f of x, you first compute f of x, right? So x must be in the domain of f, right? x must be in the domain of the inside function. Anyway, so, so this is f of x. Now what does g do? g takes whatever you give it and it makes 2 over that thing. So this is what g of f of x is. Simplify it, you flip over the bottom function, multiply it out, you get this. So like I was getting at, what is the domain? To be in the domain of this composition, x must be in the domain of f of x, so x can equal 2. But also, f of x must be in the domain of g of x. So, so you say f of x cannot equal 0. Well look, f of x equals 5 over x minus 2. That cannot equal 0. Well, it turns out, this, this is kind of subtle, when is a fraction equal to 0? The only time a fraction can ever equal 0 is when the numerator equals 0. So the numerator is 5, and this can never equal 0. So you don't have to worry about any x, x values here. While I'm talking about that, uh, when is a fraction undefined? A fraction is undefined whenever the denominator is 0. Right? So this is important to know. Okay, let's see. Let's keep on going here. Suppose I have these two functions. Here's the graph of f of x, and here's the graph of g of x. Okay? I want to I I use the graph to compute f circle g of 0, which means f of g of 0. Now from a graphical point of view, all you have to do is first compute g of 0. g of 0 is over here. g of 0 is about 2. So you, 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 you compute g of, g of 0 to be 2, and then you have to compute f of that. What's f of 2? f of 2 is about 1. Let's try another one. Let's suppose you want to compute g, uh, g circle f of 5, which means g of f of 5. You would first compute f of 5, which looks like negative 2, so g of f of 5 is, is g of negative 2. And what is g of negative 2? Looks like it's about 3. All right, well, why don't you try to, to compute this one. What is g circle f of negative 5? See if you can use the graph to do that. Well, you'd first compute f of negative 5, which is 6. And what's g of 6? Well, there is no g of 6. It's undefined. This is what I was talking about in, in the previous example. x is in the domain of f, right? In fact, f of negative 5 is 6, but f of x is not in the domain of g. So this is an example where it, where it rules out, you have to rule it out, because it's not in the, in the domain of the outside function. All right, see if you can do this one. See if you can compute, use, use the graphs to compute f circle g of 6. Okay, well here, you first compute, that means f of g of 6. What's g of 6? Uh-oh, there's no 6, so it's not in the domain of the inside function. So here's, here's, here's the other example of how you can rule out a value. It has to be in the domain of the inside function as well. Okay, this is the last thing we'll do. Though this, is, this is kind of fun, too. Suppose we have... Um, go ba backwards here. Uh, suppose I'm giving you the composition of the functions, and you want to find the functions that form the composition. The, the key is the inside function is g of x, the outside function is f of x. There's lots of answers, by the way. Anyway, the outside function looks, the f of x would be the square root function, right? On this first one, and the inside function would be 9 minus x squared. The outside function here would be the 1 over x function, and the inside function would be x squared plus 1. There's a lot of other ways to do it as well. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.